Um, Tim, thank you very much for addressing our conference. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you, you said that we face in Australia an increasing th threat of extremism and Islamism in your speech. Yes. How do we cope with that? And are we coping with it? Oh, that's a big question. But are we coping with it? I think the broad answer is, of course, yes. Um, but there are significant challenges we face into the future from Islamist extremism. We've seen radicalisation and we've now unfortunately seen very much, not just in terms of people we send overseas, but also people here and the threat that poses. Um, the challenge for us is how, as a community, we bind people together and get them to have an investment in our society. Because when it comes down to it, when people choose to become sufficiently radicalised to go overseas or commit acts of violence against Australians, it's because they don't see their investment in their future in our nation or in our current way of life, which is why when they focus on programs like de-radicalisation, it's very much about how we improve social bonds. It's about how we improve the community infrastructure to make sure that people aren't radicalised in the first place, but also to make sure there's the community interest to stop people ending up being radicalised. Are we overreacting? No, not at all. I mean, I, this is a very unique problem. It's a new one that governments around the world are to be put it bluntly, fumbling their way through. Once upon a time, with you know, the threats were foreign governments and armies. Today, they are uh, rogue individuals uh, who have been radicalised and are prepared to go off and commit acts of violence. And sometimes, tragically, in almost a spontaneous fashion, which we can't prepare for. We've seen the human consequences of this now on the, the streets of Sydney. But what we can't do is shut down our rights and freedoms in the process. We have to design laws and practices that one, stop people being radicalised in the first place. Secondly, that they, people have an investment in our community who are susceptible to radicalisation. Uh, and thirdly, to make sure there's a proper surveillance to make sure that we know what's happening in these particularly underground communities. Is there a danger that governments can go too far, interfere too much in our human rights in reacting to extremism, terrorism, Islamism? Oh, absolutely, governments can go too far. And that's why I use the expression, governments are fumbling their way through. They're trying to find how to deal with these unique threats and new threats, while also recognising how to preserve and protect our liberties. And what we've seen more and more is laws that probably go too far, then governments are reviewing them after a short period of time and seeing whether they're still necessary um, to achieve the objective they are, or whether there are necessary safeguards to ameliorate the consequences and make sure law-abiding citizens are not caught up with. That goes on in terms of, uh, for instance, the data retention laws we now have, um, control orders that operate on individuals should they be suspects of terrorism, and all the different arms of the security agencies and national security uh, that is necessary to keep this country safe. There's no perfect answer. We're not alone in this, and we have to be vigilant to make sure that if either governments don't overreach or if they do, that those proposals are paired back. Of course, the human rights issue for many Australians is the human rights of asylum mm. seekers kept in detention. Yes. Is that an intractable problem? It's an intractable problem because so long as you have people arriving by boat, whether we like it or not, the perception amongst the Australian community is that the government has lost control of the process. Australians have no issue with accepting asylum seekers, none. The issue is making sure that it's based on need in neat and orderly fashion and that people pass health, security and identity assessments. What we've done is put people in detention centres. There's nothing wrong with doing that for short periods of time while we get through those basic checks. There is a problem when people are in detention for periods of two or three years where people are denied their, their capacity not just to live their lives freely but to express themselves as an individual. Um, because what detention centres can do is over long periods of time dehumanise people, um, take the habit and routine out of life for people to be able to go on and be not just constructive individuals while there, but also constructive individuals when they leave. And we have to think much more closely as a society about what we're doing to people in detention centres, particularly the legacy effects 
that then have an impact on their capacity to be successful new Australians and then go on and achieve their Australian dream. So in your conversations with the government, yes. what is the Human Rights Commission and Tim Wilson saying behind closed doors? <laughs> behind closed doors, if I'm saying behind closed doors, I'm not about to say to you on camera. <laughs> but what I can say is that a lot of the things we've touched on today uh, are regularly discussed with all levels of government, um, not just at a macro policy level, but often at an individual level around human experiences and how we can fix those, and also how it is we change some policy around different areas of asylum seeker issue, issues or also in national security, um, but also around the role of religious freedom uh, in 21st century Australia and how that interacts with some of the, the social debates we're having at the moment. Because my job as Human Rights Commissioner isn't just to enlarge the freedom of some sections of the community, is to focus on the issues that affect everybody because we have to find a way that advances and protects the rights of all people so our country can move forward together. Big job. Big job, but it keeps me entertained. <laughs> Tim Wilson, thank you for joining the AAA today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay.